Hello, thank you for tuning in to Subaru Sleeping with Carson. On this episode, I'm going to be doing a modification to my long drawer build. So I made a long drawer. It has what it sounds like, a long drawer. It also has an area for waters on the top. There was a little available ledge, and I basically walled it in and put a little uh, box so I could open and close it. I'm shown putting cans in it, but you could really put anything in one in it. I like that you can access it while in the car. I think it's going to be a good uh, addition to the already great long drawer build. I hope you enjoy it, and again, thank you for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please do so and like this video. All right, let's um, test it out first and put it in the car. I'm going to uh, lay down all the seats and go ahead and unfold the 88 inch sleeping platform, which I'm going to pair up with the long drawer and this build. I'm just showing that um, uh, I'll be able to access it, and I think it's a good place right there. I'll also get back in the car to let you know that you know this uh, platform, it could work either way with regard to sleeping. So I'm just setting up these cans here to get a general measurement of where the cans need to be uh, in conjunction with um, my little box that I'm going to build, so there'll be uh, ample space. And then I'm using some, uh, all this was built actually with um, spare lumber I had and, and spare hardware and stain that I had. I, I had bought some extra poly stain, um, which is that that uh, polyethylene um, kind of coating and then also uh, stain itself. So I had some of that left over making the final measurements. Now here, this is a big, I've made lots of mistakes in this build. See how the long portion of this board is sticking out and the short portion is on the, um, uh, the table? It should actually be the opposite because a lot of tension builds up and right here, see how it boom and then kicks back? That's kind of dangerous because it could have kicked back on me. It did a little bit with the saw, so definitely if you're going to do that, I would have, if there's a long overhanging um, piece of the board, I would either have another sawhorse, which I totally have and didn't use, uh, supporting that so that doesn't happen, or turn it around where the part you're cutting is on the, um, the, the shorter end is hanging over. Now right here, I set up these three clamps. This is another funny accident. I ran the saw a couple times to see if I would clear them, but look, I hit that one, and I hit that one, and uh, I hit the, um, the third one here. So uh, clearly, I did not... Um, space those out or back them up enough to not not hit them while I was sawing which is pretty funny now I'm just uh, putting everything in here initially I was going to have this taller but now that I'm noticing that it's going to have to kind of open up I'm gonna cut this um, board down a little bit so the cans just fit inside now again I'm using cans but this storage area can really be for anything um, though it can hold cans very well. Here's another mistake I made. This big kind of cantilever edge hanging over and then me sawing it with the circular saw. I, I, you really need to be able to push down firmly with the circular saw or you'll cut uneven, which I do in fact do that in this build. So this is also, I would say a no-no. I would uh, turn it around and just do you know several small cuts with just a little bit of the board hanging over the edge, not a huge a huge bit like, like, like I did. So uh, don't do as I do, do as I say or say as I do or whatever that saying is just be careful and don't make mistakes L learn from my mistakes maybe that's what I'm trying to say I don't forget where it is but as I said before there I did a, a, a lot or one long bit of really bad cuts it might be this one because I'm stopping and starting I think the blades getting a little dull but on one of these uh, thing oh right here look at that look at that cut look how horrible that is it's like a, a wavy noodle that's awful uh, it must have just happened, that cut I just did that I was talking about perhaps being a bad cut, and in fact it was. I'm going to see see how I get the straight edge out here, which that's another thing. I never had one of these straight edges. Straight edges. Um, I really recommend it. Uh, it's like 48 inches long. It's great for just getting a nice long cut. You can use those little chalk lines, but even those sometimes I could mess up. But here I did use the straight edge. I did firmly press on the, um, uh, the circular saw, and I made a really clean cut. So I made up for my awful error uh, from before. Uh, we'll just act like it didn't happen or learn from it. So here I am um, about to get the box all enclosed. I'm cutting the ends, the little end caps to close it off. Uh, as I get done and get to the point where I kind of put it all on there, I I'm seeing getting some vices, um, some clamps because the clamps really help me hold the box together so I can lay the lid on it and then screw the lid in place. Um, but it is kind of comical leading up to that because I'm trying to get one end, uh, you know, fixed and then the other end pops out. And then I try to get the other end in and realize that there's a little bit of overhang and I've got to cut it. And then I try to use the circular saw, but the circular saw is too big and the piece of wood is too small and it's really just a danger. So then I end up taking out the handsaw. But again, these are all things that... Um, 
better safe than sorry. You know, definitely don't use the circular saw if you're cutting a toothpick size uh, wood. But see, this one is okay. It's it's large enough where there's still room to cut it with the circular saw. But there's another one coming right here. See, I'm like trying to use the circular saw, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm dumb. This is not safe. I'm just going to use the handsaw, which it's good to have a handsaw in in these situations. So again. I'm seeing putting everything up here and trying to get it set. And every time I get one side set, it's like the other side pops out. And then I'm like, oh, darn. And I go and and then put that side in. Look, and the other part, the other side fell down. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of comical as I was putting this together. I think I finally get the clamps out. I'm like, okay, look, I'm going to clamp this down. So as I, so I'm really just trying to get the box in place so I can measure and mark where I'm going to put in the hinges for the top. All right, I think I pretty much got it here. I'm, I'm just going to kind of make one last measurement. There was something that overhung just a little bit, so I'm going to just saw off a little bit with the handsaw, but I am getting it in there, maybe just a little bit more shaving off of something. Now, I, I say maybe just a little bit more, but I think I'm seeing in, in one more scene taking off uh, a long section of this box, and here it is, and cutting off just a little bit more. You know, what, what do they say? Measure twice, cut once i think what the saying is i think i measure like once or five times and then i cut like 17 times so i don't know if that saying really works for me or that you know i may or may not have learned from i don't know what, what's to learn i don't know learning is life and life is about learning so just watch this video and take what you can from it and try not to make my mistakes but know in the end you know just just be safe and as long as you're having fun and it works for you then that's all that really matters right so I'm pretty much done with it. It, it looks good. I then um, and am I will be seeing. Um, oh, I'm making I'm making one more adjustment. That's okay. Like I said, you know, just uh, whatever works for you. Okay, now I think I'm almost done. This has got to be one of the last cuts. So now that I'm like, okay, it totally works. Now I'm gonna clamp it a different direction so I can. There we go. But good enough. That's I think that's what I'm saying at that moment. Good enough. I'm I'm satisfied with that. Now we're going to pull out the hinges, and uh, these are also, you know, um, leftover hinges I've had from other builds that I'm using. And then I'm going to get out the Dremel. Now this is kind of a sad story here. You know, I had a Dremel before and just totally wore it out and uh, and burned it out. And uh, but see, I'm, I'm screwing things. I've done this before and then said don't do it. Now I'm going back on what I said. I'm screwing these screws through the wood, and then I'm going to use the Dremel little metal cutting bit to, to cut off the tips of the screws that went through. So I, I wore out one Dremel. I got a new Dremel. I got this like 4300 model or something that's supposed to have a bigger engine or bigger motor or whatever. And in this video, I'm seeing actually burning out the motor. I, I'm going to have to call the manufacturer. I don't necessarily think I did anything wrong. Maybe I didn't push the speed up as much as I should have, but I switched then to a backup Dremel, but it's not a backup Dremel. It's an old Craftsman rotary uh, device that I think was pre-Dremel. And it was really old and I got it from like my, my uh, father-in-law when we cleaned out his garage and um, I'm seen using it here. So it actually, the Dremel does start the, the project before it dies and then I use the Craftsman to finish it. So that's what I'm showing off here in a minute, the Craftsman and how it uh, and how it finished it off. And it's actually, it worked pretty well and I'll be using it. I'm glad I have it because I'll be using it in the meantime before I can um, uh, put in a claim to Dremel because it's not even a year old and see if I can't get that fixed. You know, I don't know. I don't even know if uh, I don't know if if uh, Craftsman even makes kind of rotary versions of the Dremel. But if they do, maybe I'll just buy one of those instead of the Dremel. I don't even know if there's a a, a, comp, a competitor to the Dremel. Maybe I should try a competitor. I've just always used the Dremel. See, now the Dremel's out, and I'm using the Craftsman. And I'm I finish here in a minute, and I hold it up to the uh, the video camera just to kind of give it props, give it respect for look the Craftsman. Look at this old thing. It totally worked well. It's just like the Dremel. It's basically a Dremel by Craftsman, so who knows? Anyway, so now I'm done with that. I've cut all the um, the little edges that went through the tips of the screws that went through the wood. I've, I've cut all those off, putting away all this stuff, and um, picking up all the little bits because I definitely don't want to drive over those um, later. So here we are. I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue, G Gorilla Wood Glue. It's super strong. I do go back and screw and nail a lot of the this little these little box edges and these three sides uh, to the long drawer. But the Gorilla Glue, uh, in all honesty, it'd probably hold it together just fine. But this is almost like a double measure. So I go ahead and from the bottom screw, put one screw into the long side, 
and then um, I uh, no I'm sorry I put it into the short side obviously because I'm picking up the long side here and adding glue to it for getting a couple places but then and putting it together now once I have it in there I end up drawing I, or I end up driving some nails through the short end into the long end just to kind of hold it in place again this is not something that is a uh, load bearing I'm not making a lo load bearing wall here or anything like that this is just holding some cans <laughs> or 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 anything really together but again I like it to be strong and and stay together and last a long time so with the, the combination of the Gorilla Glue and then some screws or nails, it should last uh, forever, um, or as long as I last forever, which won't be forever, but it'll last. With a combination of some screws in the right places and then nails in other places. But I'm gonna clamp it down and get it nice and in place, make sure it lines up with um, the lid uh, closing and everything like that, and then I'm going to um, continue to put in some screws and nails to keep it firm. All right, so now I'm just going around and making sure that I got all the drips, and I think it's great. I think it, it came out fine. Now I'm just going to be driving in some nails from that short side into the long side, and then I have a screw from underneath going into the short side. So once I do all that, this thing's going to be solid. Again, like I said, it's not. I'm not building a deck that's supposed to hold 100 people. I'm, I'm building a box that holds some cans. Um, but I think with a combination of this, these going, going into that little short side, um, it's going to work out fine. Uh, the next day, when um, this goes to you know to the second day, the next day I do drive two nails into the side because that little short side, when it butts up against that other box, there is actually nothing connecting it there. Now, of course, it's not going anywhere, but that section of the box, if I ever picked it up or something, I could theoretically, I guess, break it. So I do end up adding uh, two more nails, and you'll see that here shortly. All right, now I'm just loading it back up in the car, and then I'm going to unfold the um, little sleeping platform, the 88-inch folding platform, and, and get in there and see how it uh, feels with um, accessing it from the inside. Look at that. I can just access it from the inside, just like I said. I'm just seeing putting a couple items in here just to kind of complete what I would do with it. Nothing in the drawer, though. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sand the box down. Now I sped this up because it was it was a long time of me sanding, but I end up starting with a, a 60, which is pretty coarse, and I think I go to a 150 with it, which is like like fine, and then I go to a I think a 200 or a 220 or something like that, which is super fine. So I kind of I go through the the steps here to be able to make sure and prep the wood to receive the stain, and. Um, uh, I just again used that polystain, which is a combination of polyethylene, which is a kind of a, a coating, and then the stain itself. They're really great. They're about $15 for a quart, and here I am uh, popping it open, and then I'm going to apply everything. Now, I did wipe this down I, I, before, you know, I, I talk about wiping it down uh, after you sand it. I'm, I've already done this, uh, and and here I go, applying everything. It turned out great. It wasn't the exact stain color as previously to the long drawer, but I think it's close enough. And it looks fine to me. So here I am driving a nail in here just to secure this short side to the box. I do that on the other side as well. And uh, actually while I'm doing it, uh, it goes through the box and it doesn't actually um, it doesn't actually connect fully. So I back it up a little bit and snip off the um, part that didn't make it. So again, it's fine. It, it it it's definitely secure from both ends, and it's gorilla glued, and and it's not going anywhere. So here's something I didn't really think about. The, the closing of the lid, the wood to wood, is very loud, like somebody clapping extremely loud. So I'm going to get those little felt tips that people put, you know, on the backside of, of uh, maybe cabinets and stuff like that. And I'm going to put them here. But instead of putting them on the, the lid, I'm actually going to set them on the edge um, before. Because once you stick these on, they're stuck and, and I don't want to waste them. So I, I put them on the edge of the box and then I'm going to lower the lid so when the lid hits the little sticky... Um, back ends of the felt sides that'll line up perfectly um, instead of putting them on the lid and then lowering them and realizing that I'm off just a couple like an inch or something so just press and put these on here I think it worked uh, really well I end up applying one more to the middle of it and uh, that really takes the um it takes the noise completely away Now I'm just gonna load it back up in the car and check it out again. Those felt things work great, it's very quiet. So 
So with the whole thing loaded out with water on the top, possibly cans on the um, in the new addition that I put on there, and the long drawer filled, I think it's best to um, strap it in to the car so it doesn't shift while driving. So I used that little prong that the seat attaches to and fold it up and just ran a strap all the way around. It's solid and not going anywhere. So I'm putting uh, cans in here. Again, you could put anything in here. I'm glad I added this. I think it was a good use of this little shelf. And I like this combination, the long drawer, uh, water's on top, extra storage here, and then the 8-8 eight, eight inch sleeping platform. I think this is what I will camp with uh, in the long term uh, because it has a lot of room inside for me and for changing and then also for gear. And there's still all kinds of other nooks and crannies in the car to put things in.